thank you uh, ashish and thank you very much for having me uh, and present my thoughts on uh, long short investing uh, you know in a market like india just to give you a brief uh, background long short investments actually uh, is, is a kind of uh, has a long history uh, in the global markets however uh, in india on a public platform it only was uh, possible to do once uh, sebi came out with this alternate investment fund guidelines which actually give you the gave you the flexibility of managing such a strategy uh, now people would wonder you know why long short investing you know why not only long only investing when you know there is a history of uh, you know kind of equities giving you uh, pretty good returns so i'll i'll probably what i'll do is basically start from uh, kind of uh, giving you a brief history of equities okay. sure thanks so i'll give you brief history of you know how the markets uh, have been in these many years as i'm sure a lot of you or most of you would be aware of the inherent problem uh you know of achieving that kind of returns and with ashish actually just alluded to as a concept and how do we use the long short strategy to probably mi uh, mitigate those kind of inherent risks which come into investing into equities okay this is a simple chart right a simple chart of uh, kind of showing you how equity has done uh, over a period of from 2000 to 2000 and probably 2000 and cannot uh, 20 now if you see uh, <coughs> nifty tri actually has been uh, delivering about 12% kager return uh, you know in this 20 years now 12% return actually by no stretch of imagination is a low number it's a very good number so if somebody would have invested right from 2000 to 2020 would have made some decent money however the problem is basically that uh, how many people would be there to actually start their investment and have the patience to hold on to this kind of long term investing what you also need to understand is basically that while the 12 number 12% number you know looks pretty fancy uh, uh, as i said the risks associated with it uh, are also very equally important to be understood and then comes as i said you know while equity return has been 12% these are the periods where you generally would see that kind of big drawdowns which generally shake the market confidence shake an investor's confidence to probably invest into an equity class so if you see from kind of 2000 we started off with the kind of dot com bubble then it went to probably the gfc uh, which is about 2008 and 2009 uh, then you had china currency problem and lately it was a valuation on a long term capital gain problem now just to kind of combine this with investors behavior okay i'll just give you one example in 2007 right when the market was at peak you saw investors putting in maximum amount of money into equities through mutual funds okay and i'm not saying that they might not have that kind of vision to hold on for a long period of time but when the markets are good they are going good you will see maximum amount coming in those kind of periods and in 2008 and 9 equally you saw maximum amount of redemptions happening as well so what essentially i'm trying to say is basically people come in at the peaks and redeem at the bottoms right again not that uh, i would question the wisdom of an investor but what i'm saying is basically that get too clouded or uh, you know over overbed with the kind of negative news in the short term right thereby not been able to ride the whole kind of uh, movement which actually is in the earlier slide which i saw at 12% kegar so effectively what it means is basically yes equities give you fabulous returns but because of the investor behavior and behavior psychology you generally don't see uh, people sticking to that as asset class for a very long period of time purely because of these kind of drawdowns big drawdowns which you have how do we address that um I know it's 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 pretty tough actually to go and be a brave heart in probably in a turbulent market 
as 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 today as well i mean when the markets are down about 200 300 points on sensex or probably 400 points on nifty uh, it's extremely tough to kind of hold on to your investments it's good to tell that hey guys uh, five years great period but when the mark to market hits by 15 percent down or 20 percent down it starts to hit the portfolio or pinch the portfolio and you know and at that point in time we make some irrational decisions as well so uh, as i said how do we solve for these kind of uh, risks which are there now uh, long short uh, strategy is one of those kind of strategic tools uh, which you can use to probably mitigate those kind of risks now how do we do that is just i'll give you some kind of very naive or a very basic example in this when you are completely long in a portfolio or you are completely you are you are going on buying and keeping and holding the portfolio for a long period of time you would be uh, subject to the vagaries of your market and that's that's pretty much normal however when you have a portfolio of both long positions and short positions what effectively it happens is basically irrespective of where the market goes the volatility into the returns which you make is decreased dramatically now again it is too much of jargon and technical language but let me give a very basic example if i have purchased a stock a at 100 rupees and i have sold a stock b at 200 rupees if the market goes up by say about 5% my stock a because of my superior stock selection would probably go to 107 uh, on my stock B, because of my, again, good selection of short ideas, will also go up by, say, about uh, 4%, which is 207 or 208, okay? What effectively I'm saying is basically, if you add both the gains on the long positions and the losses on the short position, you still will keep on making some money. Similarly, if the market comes down, what effectively happens is basically my stock A, which is at 100 rupees, goes down to 95 or 96, whereas my stock B, which is at 200 rupees, goes down even further purely because I am shorting those kind of names which are broken business model uh, and, and fundamentally not good companies. So again, there in the markets, when it comes down, tries to make some amount of money as well. So effectively, what I'm saying is basically, irrespective of market conditions, you are pretty much in there with lower volatility, keep on making small amount of money. Now, the natural question would be, hey guys, I mean, if you are going to make some such kind of small amount of money, at the end of it, if the market rallies, how would you perform? And a very, very pertinent question is that, or, and the answer to that is basically that no market in the world is linear, okay? There are always ups and downs. The moment you protect the downside, you are automatically creating a huge amount of alpha on your portfolios. And if you go on a steady ship, uh, which I will show in a couple of slides later, how has our portfolio behaved uh, during the last three years, it will give you a superior example of how risk-adjusted returns can be generated by using those kind of long-short portfolios. So again, uh, there are finer nuances and technicalities involved in that long, uh, long short strategy. But what essentially you're trying to do is basically you are trying to buy fundamentally sound companies which are good for three to five years, trying to hold onto the portfolio on the long side, and you are shorting companies which are not good, which are weak corporate governance, who are kind of, from, you know, their business models are you know, fundamentally distorted. Um, and that's, that's the kind of essentiality of that whole long shot portfolio. Now let me also kind of take you through uh, this kind of simple chart where what I'm trying to say is basically along the kind of risk return curve, right? Uh, how does long short strategies actually, you know, are placed? Now on the X axis is basically your risk and a risk is measured according to us uh, because, uh, you know, through standard deviation or volatility. What is the kind of volatility you are uh, generating to make that kind of returns, okay? And your uh, y-axis is the returns. So a normal risk return curve where uh, low-risk, low low-return liquid funds would probably be very low risk and gives you low returns to a high-risk, high-return equity diversified and probably sector funds where the volatility is pretty high but the potential of returns also to make is pretty high. 
uh, along the curve, there are from liquid funds, there are short-term funds, and then duration products, because duration products will have some higher volatility purely because of the interest rate risks. Uh, what we essentially we are trying to do with, with that long short is basically you try to generate returns which are kind of low on volatility, low on risk. And that's why if you see AARF, if you see, which is our absolute return fund, is a product which generates consistent returns with very low volatility, which is probably a debt plus kind of volatility. And just to give you some numbers, an income fund or a duration product would give you uh, returns with a volatility of, historically volatility of about five to 6%. Absolute return fund has generated those kind of gross returns or more uh, with a volatility of about 3% in the last three years, when your nifty volatility is about 15%. So essentially what you're saying is basically you are trying to generate those kind of returns with volatility or risks, which is one fifth. And that's why what I mean by risk adjusted returns, where you optimize your return for every unit of risk you take uh, you know, uh, in the markets. Similarly, the other product which is there, again is an ERF, which is enhanced return fund, which is an equity product, uh, where the aim is to generate equity plus return with equity minus risks. So all in all, long shot as a strategy is used to generate those kind of risk adjusted return strategies, which actually has the potential to shift the whole risk return curve on a normal uh, case. Now, let me uh, extrapolate that ARF, which I showed you uh, kind of on, on this chart, which is on the top uh, left corner, uh, and plot you the kind of returns it's generated since March of 2017 when our product was kind of uh, launched in the new avatar. And the blue line is probably the index. So if you see initial period, you would find that my kind of uh, returns are subnormal below the nifty. But if you keep on consistently performing, right, chipping in, uh, you know, month on month, or probably not going down as much when the markets are down, you eventually see that you are, you are kind of up there in terms of the returns, right? Now, this is not only a three-year phenomenon. We've managed long short strategies for the last 15 years. In the last 15 years, I have seen this happen year after year, year after year. Only in the last 15 years, two or three years is where I've saw, seen index actually outperforming my absolute return. Forget about uh, benchmarking to Nifty, but the year the intention is to generate consistent positive returns with very, very less volatility. And this is what it shows in terms of my graph on how I am generating probably consistent returns throughout the period. Okay, now also let me uh, run through this kind of brief or broad economic or uh, ecosystem for long short funds in India. As I mentioned to you earlier that uh, alternate investment funds actually came up only in 2012 when SEBI came out with this whole forward-looking guidance. Uh, and from then, we were the ones in our earlier organization to launch one of the first long short products into India. Uh, having said that, we have been actually managing the long short strategy on a proprietary desk since 2005-06. So till 2012, there was no ecosystem. And from 2012-13 is when the, oh, these uh, guidelines came, and thereby, we effectively, we could have launched. Secondly, uh, from a global perspective, long shot funds are pretty much prevalent. And just to give you some brief statistics is basically, globally, the long shot funds are close to about $3.5 trillion, uh, which is close to about 5% of the total assets uh, in, in, in the globe. Uh, and all those kind of uh, survive on, on uh, you know, uh, on, on having that ecosystem where they can actually borrow uh, stocks and probably short into the markets, right? However, India is a pretty unique market in that sense. While globally, you can actually uh, lend and borrow kind of stocks and you know, use your long short strategies. Uh, locally, there is a robust derivatives market uh, you know, a derivatives market led by futures and options, uh, which enables us to probably hedge in a very, very effective manner, okay? Now, when in our conversations with, uh, you know, all the global investors, they always find it very amusing, actually, saying that, you know, hey, guys, you guys have a very prevalent futures market. How is that kind of there? Uh, and it, it takes a huge amount of time to explain to them that, you know, 
because of the history of Badla, which was in 1990s, there is a system of carrying forward trades and which has come into, in, into different forms and shapes, and now it is in futures. Uh, and and uh, that this gives us a unique ability to use that whole derivative segment to, to effectively manage these long short uh, strategies and trying to hedge the portfolios. In terms of the skill sets needed, uh, of course, fundamental knowledge is the basis of this strategy. Because you need to, you know, in a normal kind of fund, uh, you will find people stock picking, uh, which is rightly so, identifying great companies, investing in them, which, which more or less everybody does that. However, what we do is we do not stop there. What we also do is basically try to find out which are the very weak companies as well, where the business models have broken. Uh, which are most vulnerable uh, you know, in a weaker economic scenario or markets or where the regulations are kind of you know, affecting them and so on and so forth. Because we do not only stop at identifying long positions or your, uh, investments, long only investments, we, we extend that argument to the short investments as well. Uh, and that is where a kind of fundamental knowledge is extremely important to understand uh, how is the sector doing, how is global markets doing, how is probably you know, individual company doing, uh, and that is how we can probably identify. At the same time, what I would suggest is basically fundamentals is not the only thing as well, because uh, you know, apart from, you, know, you, you can have a stock which is highly valued at 50 times, and that 50 times can kind of be highly valued or maybe go to 60 times uh, for the next five or 10 years, and you, if, you, if, if you identify that as a stock citing expensive valuations, you would have got killed. So what essentially we also do is basically try and marry those kind of fundamental skills with derivative skills, technical skills, and our experience of managing a long short portfolio for the last 15 years, which helps us in managing effectively uh, the long short portfolio. And, and trust me, it is, it is pretty much tricky to kind of manage uh, the both sides of the portfolio in different market conditions. Now, what does this all do in terms of your asset allocation uh, you know, needs uh, into your portfolio? What, what, how does this help? Uh, we do think that you know, it's a strong case, uh, and a long, long shot portfolio is a strong case to actually have it in the portfolio, primarily because it gives you hugely uncorrelated returns. So whenever there is a huge amount of market turbulence, this is a segment which will probably steady your ship, right? Uh, this is a segment which will not kind of deteriorate rapidly, though yes, because of the market conditions, you would be kind of uh, up and down very marginally, but you will not find uh, those kind of uh, portfolios, uh, you know, going down as much as the market uh, or giving you that kind of heartache. So effectively, this is a great product or a great strategy to actually try and uh, generate uncorrelated returns. It balances the whole portfolio returns and gives you diversification into the portfolio. So that's, that's about kind of, you know, what I wanted to talk to you about, uh, you know, long short strategies.